I've been asked to give a history of my life. I was born in April, 1881. My parents were very poor. We had a little farm. I went to school in the winter. At the age of 14, I was sent out to learn a tree. I dreamt one night. I dreamt about America. What a wonderful place it was that you could make as much as two, two and a half dollars a day. Next day I went to my mother and asked her if she'd let me go to America. Soren was a very bright, competent person. He got his start by being the concrete superintendent on the rebuilding of the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco after the earthquake. And it was the first reinforced concrete building that he'd ever worked on but he was made the superintendent of it. And in his journal, it talks about being paid to do something he knew nothing about. He came from essentially nothing to being a very respected contractor in the Salt Lake area. I came to work out of college in 1966. Somewhere in the 1980s, we had 16 total employees in the office and warehouse. There was a time when I knew virtually every employee we had. Ted asked me to come over and help him look at the ways that the company could transition beyond the Jacobson family ownership. I was visiting another contractor in Seattle and. They had an ESOP program, and uh, I went out to visit one of their projects and met one of their project managers, and he described to me the fact that when he retired, he would have over $500,000 in his ESOP account. I just thought, that's perfect. Those are the people who deserve a great share of the company's income, and so that was the beginning of the seeds that eventually grew into causing the company to be an ESOP. It was immediately apparent to me that two things had to happen in order to make that transition. One, we had to learn how to keep the culture that Ted and his family had at Jacobson Construction for so many years. And we had to have people start thinking as owners, not as uh, employees. We're all in this together. And the more we can work together to make the company successful, the more prosperity and value there is uh, for all of us to share both now and in the future. It makes it so that the pickup truck that's on the job really belongs to the employee who's about to get in it and he'll treat it differently because it's partly his truck and the two by four laying on the ground is partly owned by the carpenter and if he can figure out a way to reuse it instead of just throw it away, it benefits him because he owns part of the company. So it just seemed to be a wonderful way to transition ownership away from just a couple of people to the whole company. It was, in a sense, a hinge point for Jacobson in terms of the future. And it's really set me up nicely to be able to enjoy a retirement as it has hundreds of other people that have uh, finished their careers at Jacobson Construction Company. Ted was one of the first construction executives in this area who embraced that idea that you didn't have to be the low bid to produce value for owners. When I started, almost all of our work came from being competitively bid. If we were the low bidder, we got the job, and if we weren't, we didn't get the job. But we kind of caught a wave and did some pioneering, and that's made a huge difference to go from being mostly competitively bid contractors to doing a great deal of construction management. At the time I came, we were doing very little with the state of Utah. We were doing nothing with Intermountain Healthcare. We were doing very little with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Those are three of the largest owners in our marketplace. And that move, that shift to value-based selection was huge in terms of allowing us to show the type of expertise and show the type of quality of building that really fostered the growth that we needed. If we had not done that, we would have been t uh, left behind. 
to construct something, I think, gives one a sense of substantial satisfaction. We've been very fortunate to be involved in some very observable, prominent projects. The fact that we got the city and county building was huge. That was a hard bid job on a technology that had never been accomplished before. That led to us eventually getting other seismic stabilization projects. And that was really an extraordinary undertaking and uh, Engineering News Record uh, recognized that project and Jacobson Construction as uh, completing one of the 100 most uh, amazing projects uh, in history. And I'm sure that was the key to our getting awarded the construction management contract on the Salt Lake Temple. I remember uh, sitting around with Richard Kirkham and others and looking at some of the big flagship projects saying, how are we going to ever reproduce the conference center? How will we ever move past the Utah State Capitol? <laughs> how are we going to fill the backlog again after big flagship projects like that? And yet it always happens. I started at Jacobson just at the end of 1999. And in that year, we had $189 million worth of revenues. And in uh, 2022, we're projecting to be somewhere between $900 million and a $1 billion of revenues. We have been very blessed as an organization uh, as we enter our 100th year now. And we are building upon the backs of many, many thousands that came before us. Ted had a fond way of saying that if you boil it all down, what we do is we rent leadership. We put our people out there as the experts in terms of bringing value to construction projects. Our people really matter, and our people truly are the most important thing to us. The company is really people, and if you don't have competent, honest, hardworking people, you don't have a really enduring sort of product. We have the people that are prepared, that are leaders, ready to move forward and accept all opportunities that are being given to us to, to move forward in our marketplace. I quickly learned that the main assets of Jacobson Construction walked in and out of the building every night. We really know at Jacobson that we can do really hard things together. COVID hit us suddenly and completely unexpectedly. And we had hundreds of employees that were showing up to job sites every day. Trying to plan and have protocols in place to keep our people safe was huge. Overall, I think the company came together in a terrific way and uh, it brought us even closer together. We understand that it's our responsibility to give back as well. As we went through the COVID time period and we were able to donate uh, masks to the hospital systems around us. We just uh, recently donated some funds and some goods to the Ukraine refugee effort that was happening here in our local community. Uh, we're planning on continuing to give back uh, as we know that we've been very blessed. I would describe our company as one who values loyalty and values people who are in it for the long term. And I would tell the employees at Jacobson Construction Company to work together, to have each other's back, that you can go much farther together Dream big and work hard and don't sell yourself short. Trust the people that you work for. Your tenure at Jacobson won't last forever, so make the very best out of it while you're there. What we do really matters. Uh, we provide an incredible service in our marketplace. It's vital that our people remain highly competent, determined, honorable, have integrity, work collaboratively with their fellow employees and with subcontractors. One of the things that I think about most is the whole idea of the wow factor, of stepping back away from what we've just done together and said, wow, look what we've just done. I see Jacobson over the next 10 years as a very successful construction company with the new leaders, the new ideas, the new technology, the new opportunities, the new economy and uh, really being able to drive the success of this company forward. I am absolutely positive about the future of Jacobson Construction Company and our opportunity to continue to have great success as we move forward in the future. We are in the greatest place in the country in terms of building a career as a general contractor. We're the envy of the nation in terms of our economy. We're growing faster than any other state and there couldn't be a better foundation uh, built
for a company moving into its next hundred years.